Good afternoon, everyone. This is Renee Norse with Urban Wealth Management and our Smart Women Savvy Money Club. Welcome to today's fantastic talk. We have a wonderful lineup today with a great topic. I'm sure it's going to be very timely for everyone. And uh, so we're going to get right down to it in a couple of minutes. But before we get started, I just wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, one is if you have any questions, please use your chat box to enter those questions. Uh, for any of you who've been on our calls before, you know that we try to stay right on time, and uh, our calls are half an hour. We hold them the second Thursday of every month, and we talk about not only financial issues, but lifestyle issues as well. So if there's anything that you have a particular interest in and want to explore, please let us know. We'll make sure that we add it to our lineup of talks. We're really excited because we have a very interesting lineup between now and the end of the year um, on a variety of topics. One of the biggest things that we hear about oftentimes is how do you manage the care for elder loved ones. And so uh, we will be starting with a series of those, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But more importantly, next week, we are going to be starting our series on Beyond the Piggy Bank Investing Basics. Over the years, we've always gotten all kinds of requests to learn more about investing. Many of us on the, today's call uh, have been investing, but frankly either need a refresh or just to go back to school again. So we're going to start that series next Wednesday. It will be for five sessions. And uh, it will cover everything from soup to nuts. Um, the sessions are listed here. Um, there will be five sessions of between 6 and 7 o'clock Pacific time. Um, and if you're unable to make a session or you want to listen to the session again, um, since they'll be recorded, we'll be sending out the replay links. There's also going to be some homework involved too, so uh, just be prepared for that. Everything is done online, so uh, for those who register, we will be sending you the link, um, and you'll also have some documents that you'll be able to download. So uh, we look forward to having you on that uh, call. As you can see here, the schedule is uh, uh, pretty much four consecutive Wednesdays. We're taking a break on the 17th, and then we will be finishing up on the 24th. The other thing we're really, really excited about, as I mentioned, we are going to be hosting a series on aging in place. Um, and that will actually start next month where we will have speaker, um, elder care, and estate planning attorney, our Christine Brown, who's here in the South Bay in the Los Angeles area. And she has um, going to have a very dynamic talk about some of the things that you need to talk to your elder care loved ones about before things start to go south. So we highly recommend that you come to um, listen in on that. Uh, June, we will have um, how to align your investable dollars with your values. And uh, we will have with us an outstanding speaker who we heard at our women's conference that we hosted in January about um, shareholder advocacy and the importance of making sure that you are putting your money where your values and your mouth is. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And then we will be following up again in June and in July, uh, or excuse me, July and August with the rest of our caregiving um, aging in place series with a realtor who specializes in uh, senior housing. And then also in August, we will have uh, a pair of very dynamic women who actually have an agency that helps families to prepare for moving their um, elder care loved ones, as well as providing solutions for them. So we've got a pretty dynamic uh, program set up, so we're looking forward to having you on those calls. And again, all of our calls are for our second Thursday calls are also recorded. So anybody who registers, whether you can be on the call live or not, we always send out the replay links for you to listen to or share. We'd love for you to do that. So with that, um, I now want to move on to today's call because this is a very uh, timely topic and one I'm sure that all of us have some issues with at some 
time in our lives. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into social media or I've gotten an email from someone saying, if you got an email from this person or you got something from me recently, it's not me. So don't respond. And so uh, we have with us our um, tech diva, who if some of you have been on our calls, you know that she has been with us several times to give us the 411 about what is going on in the tech world. And so we are very excited to have her back. Zenobia Millet is, um, actually has a very interesting background because she started out as a recording engineer, she's a sales engineer, and she's the first female member of the Sapphire Group, which is a society of audio pioneers, engineers, and audio enthusiasts. She's also an award-winning interactive multimedia producer, just to name a few. She's merged her passions and 30-plus years of experience together with, uh, to bring you the touchable tech diva. To learn more about her, you will be, and we'll share that with you towards the end of her presentation. There's a variety of ways that you connect with her. Um, but she has been able to merge her worlds of technology, her mad passion for jazz, and her pursuit to live passionately, which dominates most of her time. She's the mother of two gorgeous women, and I have met one of them. And she is gorgeous, lives in Washington, D.C. And she's also Nana Z to five equally gorgeous grandchildren. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Zenobia. Are you there, Z? And There oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> there I am. Hi again. All right. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. And, uh, yes, this topic that we're going to talk about, it is so pervasive. And you roll over in the morning and someone else has been hacked or some major hack. And, you know, we here in this country, we're living through the post-election hacking potentially. And, um, yeah, it gets down to us. And it's very, very serious. So we're going to explore that a little bit. I'm going to give you some tools that you can help to what I call self-defense yourself and uh, be able to try to um, protect you and your assets and your family and those that you hold dear. So uh, most people have probably heard the term hack attack, but do you really know what that really means? So here's the definition for you. Way back in the day, um, when uh, before the Internet was pervasive, it was called the World Wide Web. And, well, you still see the WWW, little history. The World Wide Web it wasn't really connected to the Internet, but then when they made it into a consumer accessible um, process, then uh, it became the Internet. Well, back then we called it cyberspace because nothing was connected physically. It wasn't a physical place that you went to, but it was something that you accessed through a computer. So that was the first name, and now we have what's called um, the hack attack. And we've all experienced some invasion of privacy and even physical theft, um, and we act with various degrees of commitment to prevent it. So we get alarm systems, we get gates, we get big barking dogs, we have patrol cars patrolling, or the too often, which still happens, the it won't happen to me syndrome. Well, as the digital world rushed out of the naivety of infancy of when it was little, where we didn't really give a lot of thought to any criminal intent, we just kind of went along our way, you know, surfing and doing things on the internet, the ease of writing programming code became pervasive, and of course, another avenue for doers of no good. Thus, we have the cyber attacks or the hack attacks. And with that, as that um, grew, it actually turned into a real economy and we know what economies are like. So what is the hacker economy? Well, it's really very, very major, very big. Marketplaces and careers now flourish in what's called the dark web, also known as the deep web. And the dark web and the deep web is, happens underneath what we typically see on the Internet. 
there's special codes that and entrances. It's really kind of, you know, cyber, uh, where a whole nother world uh, and economy happens. So, yes, that's where your data gets sold, gets traded, gets bartered, um, and there's values to it. So if you uh, get a chance later on, you can look at the slide again, and you can see how much you can actually put a, an amount to when you've gotten hacked. For instance, the Google $2 per hack. And what happens is that you do enough of these, people actually have careers and real jobs where they make like real money, although the money isn't really real. It's usually on another kind of money economy like Bitcoin, um, but it ends up being um, laundered into real money so people can pay their rent or whatever they're going to do. Anyway, at this point, uh, they've calculated this whole cyber crime market to be anywhere from 450 million billion I'm sorry with a b to 1 trillion dollars so with that uh understand that um when you're not careful with protecting your own data this is what you you are giving someone a job <laughs> So it's not the kind of jobs that we typically want to have. Um, so how do they do that? There are so, so many ways. This is a list of some of them. And some uh, sound pr probably appear familiar to you, and some are um, actually new to me in the last couple of days or so. But you might be familiar with what's called malware, or you've heard that term. And I'm just going to go real quickly through these. Uh, malware is where if you understand when you surf on the web, um, cookies are used to access and, and send you information back and forth. Well, sometimes along with that data that comes to your computer will be viruses. You'll see viruses, Trojan horses, all kinds of different um, malware. Those are considered malware, which can simply um, – infect a file or actually take down your whole computer, your whole network. So those are very, very dangerous. You're familiar with phishing, with a PH, um, because when you get emails and you see these bogus emails happen sometimes, then um, th that's known as phishing because they hack your, your, um, your password or your email and send you uh, links or emails that are potentially dangerous as, as well. So you want to be really careful about clicking, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, on emails that you just don't feel that sure about if you know who actually really sent it. So you want to be paying a lot of attention before you actually click. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, one of, and of course you might be familiar, I just mentioned about password attacks and um, they have computers that create algorithms and it's just like dialing for dollars. They will do these algorithms until they get a hit and a match to your email if they are targeting you and uh, actually hijack your your email. And let's see. Oh, this is a new one to me. I didn't know it had a name, but I'm, I'm familiar with this called mal malvertising. And, uh, you know, when you see those ads on websites and you're just not too sure about what uh, if they're safe or not, typically they aren't. So what happens is that there's code embedded in the ad itself, and they make it enticing so you'll go on and click on it, and then the click could be really, really harmful and actually cause uh, damage to your computer, create viruses, or a, a way to actually hack your personal data off of your computer. And um, finally, but not least, is ransomware. And there's a lot of talk about ransomware because now what happens is not only do they hijack your data, your computer, your accounts, but they then get in touch with you and say if you want it back, then you have to pay a certain amount of money. So they're holding you hostage there, and depending on how serious the, the data is, you're going to end up paying. So hospitals have had to pay, actually had to pay millions of dollars, different um, 
corporations have actually had to end up paying. So you can't stop these folks because they're very smart and that's all they do is code. So they're constantly creating code. So we have to figure out ways to defend ourselves and at least try to slow them down. So with that, here's uh, some tools that I have for you to be able to at least slow them down. The first of which I'm still having trouble with people understanding how important this is, is backup, 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 backup. Please, on a zip drive, I'm sorry, ooh, I went way back, on um, a flash drive, external hard drive to the cloud, have some kind of backup of your um of your computers and even your smartphones, please back those up. It's 2017. I should not get a text from somebody's, someone else's phone that says, it's me. I lost all my data. Can you give me your information again? No, it's 2017. We should not be at that point, especially if you're a business person. So hard drives are very, very cheap now. Just get an external hard drive and use the automatic software to back it up and just let it back up on its own because that was gonna, that's actually going to save you a lot of money and time if you do happen to get hacked because you can get back up running very quickly without uh, much loss. And, you know, if you lose your data and, it, and you lose time, you're losing money whether it's for your business, for your job, or you personally. And then also keep up with the updates. Now it used to be, well, I wouldn't update for three or four months until this update settled out and they got all the bugs out. No, now the security updates are mandatory as soon as they come out. So be sure to pay attention to when uh, the security updates uh, alerts are given so that you can make sure that you do that and also now keep your operating systems up to date as well and especially on your Android smartphones they are so susceptible to viruses and hacking so you want to make sure that you always keep those up to date uh, let's see okay then also your Wi-Fi networks now, there are people that still don't password their Wi-Fi networks. They said, oh, that's too much trouble, it's too long, blah, blah, blah. No, password your Wi-Fi networks. And if not for you, but for the guests that you may have, because you want to protect them also. And when you do password them, use WPA or WPA2. Those are the best and the strongest of the um, password security, I'm sorry, the security um, systems. And uh, oh, be aware that free, don't get happy when you see free Wi-Fi because if you're not asking for a password, chances are that is insecure. And you're putting all of your data, your phone, your laptop, all of your data at risk. So it's much better to... Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too, even use the hotspot on your smartphone and tether your laptop or even your desktop to your phone's um, hotspot because that's way, way more secure. Okay, the last two are pretty much for professionals, firewalls. Um, those are hardware and for if you're in a business, small, medium, uh, large business, large-scale business, um, firewalls are really, really good to have, and uh, VPNs also. That makes uh, allows you to have your own private network so that you create a secure environment. And then real quickly, uh, look, look before you click so that when you get emails, confirm who the sender is on the email and just look in who the sender is and if it ends with a .de or it has some scrambled characters, then you know that's phishing and not to click on any of the links that are there. Also, if there are links and you want to test it out, copy and paste it. Don't click on it. Copy and paste it instead and then paste it into a browser and um, and see because that will tell you if it's being redirected to a malicious site. Um, also, another um, nice thing to do, especially if you like to shop online or you deal with a lot of unknown people and you don't want them to have your real email address, create an alias 
uh, whoever is the provider of your emails, most of them, at least all of them, probably all of them, give you the ability to create a fake, well, it's not a fake email, but it's another email that's different from your own, but all the email, so when you send an email, it will have that email address, not your your regular one, but the replies will come back to you, so you're not missing anything, and uh, it's great for um, privacy and for security when you're doing online shopping. If you like to do, especially now in this environment, that's a good idea to do that for shopping. Okay, and then real quickly on the websites, again, copy and paste uh, if you're not sure of where that is. Also, a big deal is to look for the HTTPS. You want to use sites that have HTTPS because those pages are encrypted and are a lot more secure. Um, especially if you're shopping, you want to be able to look for that. Also, if you're a shopper, and, you know, we are bombarded with all kinds of ads. Beware because if it's an unknown again, it may be that uh, it has some kind of malware that's embedded into that link. So you want to be really careful. And for me, I don't mind spending a little bit more money so that I shop at more known and familiar brands just to be more more secure. So just um, keep that in mind when you're clicking on links. And then again, uh, beware of um, downloading. And also again, you can use the alias emails for shopping. Okay, last couple of things with social media. You want to um, be aware, you know, think about what you're posting. And I was told that it's okay to say I try to be politically correct, but use a little common sense when you're doing your <laughs> posts, okay? So don't give your itinerary. Don't say I'm excited about going on my vacation. Just wait and hold your excitement when you get back and you can show them where you've been, okay? So just be careful about that. And also uh, be careful about downloading videos and ads again there because, um, you know, the codes can be embedded there also. Uh, and then, you know, here I it's a mystery to me, but people's Facebook accounts get hacked. So you got to change your passwords often, okay, even your Facebook passwords. It's a pain in the neck, but we have to learn how to do that because the trolls are constantly scrubbing for your personal information because it means money to them. Okay, real quickly, private browsing. If you're doing confidential uh, uh, work on the Internet, you have to look at confidential files and just switch over to private browsing. Every um, browser allows you to do that. And as I mentioned, you can use your smartphone's personal hotspot and then you can tether and use that. It shows up in your list of networks on your laptop or on your desktop and that creates a safe and secure environment. Now, it will affect your data plan. So uh, potentially if you travel a lot like I travel a lot and I don't use hotel Wi-Fi, because typically it's not passworded, and the people at the desk think that it is, but it's not. Um, it's not. It's you know, it's unsecure. So I, 99% of the time, I'm using my phone to drive the internet to my laptop. So keep that in mind as well. Okay. And uh, previously, I did a webinar for. Um, urban Wealth Management, about password management. So I won't spend a lot of time here except to say if you haven't done it already, you've got to do more complex passwords, okay, and also ante up for a password manager to help you manage this. Uh, I would recommend especially for your banking accounts that you do not use the same passwords because if you get hacked on one, then and there's access to all your other bank accounts, they're going to have a password and they'll clean you out on all of your accounts. So, you know, just try to keep those separate. I re highly recommend that. And uh, also one thing that I'm doing for key accounts is two-factor verification. And what that means is that besides your regular password, um, it, the two-factor verification, it will require to you to do another level of verification. So it will send a code to a text message to you 
or a phone call, sometimes emails, but mostly text or phone. And then once you get that code, then you enter that code and then you can enter whatever that website is there. So on really, really important um, websites that I uh, want to have access to, I'm now doing two-factor verification because chances are pretty slim that a hacker is going to have both of those. Um, pretty slim at this point. Okay, and then last but not least, we have the biometrics and that's fingerprint. So I'm using that quite a bit myself now as well, especially on my banking um, apps on my phone. This is right now, well, you can you can get a, an external um, fingerprint reader, but um, I don't think that that's necessary, but on your smartphone, if you're using banking apps, that's where I like to use the fingerprint. Um, it takes uh, when you first set up your your phone, it you it takes a picture of your um, mostly your thumb, maybe ten times because you never put your thumb on your phone the same way. So it um, records that, and at this point, it's much safer than even doing passwords. Although, as cameras get better and better and better with the 12-pixel, 18-pixel cameras, they're getting pretty good to pick up all the details of the fingerprint. So we have a small window right now of having better security using the fingerprint. And also there's voice recognition, voice authorization that um, I know uh, banks in Australia, they're using that. And then I've also seen iris scan products as well. Those aren't quite on a mass level to consumers, but um, that's one way because they're looking at these three as um, you having such a unique um, uh, footprint that it will be hard to replicate that. Okay, so I kind of ran through that really quick. We only have a couple of minutes left. I did um, give you links to information if you really want to go into the weeds and learn more information. Uh, the one that's really important is the one about HTTPS Everywhere. It's an extension that you can add to your browser that makes all your browsing um, encrypted, which is a good, a cool, cool thing to do. Okay, so that's the, um, the tips for helping you to uh, safeguard yourself and um, your little self-defense toolbox. Uh, I enjoy, I'm an addict to this, so I love curating and finding and exploring the tech topics that um, make our world run because we can't get away from technology. So I help you to decipher a lot of um, what the uh, technologies are that are affecting your world so your world will work better. And uh, I am based here in the Los Angeles area, Los Angeles, Pasadena area, and I do um, workshops, but I also do private sessions. So you can, there's a link there actually if you want to, uh, have a private session via Skype or Google Hangout, you can click and reserve a time for me to uh, help you out. And um, also uh, there's going to be in the resource area the menu of my other consultation services as well. And I'm available to speak to your groups and to actually do little coffee clashes to help with um, your friends and family who want to learn more about different technologies. And uh, real quickly, save the date, August 15th will be Tea, Tech, and Tequila. So you can probably guess what that's going to be about. And that's going to be, be fun. big, big fun. <laughs> Big, big fun, and it's a fundraiser also for one of my favorite charities, so uh, look forward to that. And uh, also I have an online tech boutique, and you can cruise there. I get little goodies that uh, I think are really useful for us, like these products uh, in particular here that I'm highlighting help you to untether from the Internet with your charging, I'm sorry, from the wall with your charging to charge your devices. And... Um, Keep you rolling. And finally, here's all kinds of information to be able to get in contact with me if you need any kind of assistance or help with any of what I talked about today and implementing them. Do not hesitate to call me. I'd love to help you out. 
and uh, get you secure and answer any of your questions. And um, I love to hear the uh, aha moments happen. <laughs> so thanks. Any questions? Oh, great. So thanks, Anobia. As always, you are just full of <laughs> very insightful and timely information. If anybody has any questions, use your chat box um, to, to send that over. We are at uh, our half-hour mark. Ooh. So. We do like to stay on time because we know people are busy. And busy. People are calling in from all across the country, too. Um, it might be a little bit later someplace else. But um, when we send out the replay link, we will include all of Zenobia's information. Um, and uh, you can certainly reach out to her for uh, some assistance in trying to get your tech life together, which for all of us is got to be a big part of our lives because technology is not going down, it's not going away. So um, unless we have some questions, um, we will close out today's session. And thank you again, Zenobia, for an outstanding presentation. And we're looking forward to having you back on our Smart Women Savvy Money uh, webinar series. Um, hopefully, we My will pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. And hopefully we will see some of you on our um, say Beyond the Piggy Bank uh, uh, webinar series and also on our um, monthly, our regular monthly webinar series as well. Thank you all. Have a fantastic day, and we will see you soon.